Okay, welcome back to part 5 of this tutorial series. Um, in this part we're basically going to be carrying on from where we left off in the previous part. Um, there's no real plan of how far we're going to get. So let's just see. Um, so where we left off before we had uh, just demonstrated this pass URL function and talked about the type of array we're going to be sending to this send post data function. Okay, so what we need to do next is define a boundary. Um, I'm not going to go into the technicals, technical details about what a boundary is, but basically it's a unique string that you use to rep uh, to divide up your HTTP header into sort of sections. So um, we define this boundary as something random and unique. Well, it doesn't have to be random; it has to be different every time you use it. So we're going to be using the current time. Uh, and an MD5 hash of that time to be more specific. Uh, and we'll use micro time. Oh dear. Micro time true. And what that does is return the current number of seconds, similar to PHP's time function, um, except it will also use milliseconds and the number of decimal places. So it's very precise. Um, and it'll be unique every time someone reloads the page, this MD5 hash will change. Um, the next thing we need to do is define a variable to, ho to hold. Sorry, that the to hold the um, uh, post um, data that we're going to be sending. We call that post. We set it, set it equal to an empty string. And then what we need to do, the slightly more interesting part, is loop over the data array that we're sending and output the appropriate post information, like the body of the HTTP. Um, request. So we can use a for each loop because it's an array and it's the easiest way. So we can say for each data as as um, name points to value. Um, just to sort of go with the HTML form style of things. And for each one of these we need to add some stuff onto this post variable. And what the stuff we're going to be adding is by the way, this dot equals means concatenate, as I demonstrated before. Um, as I t briefly demonstrated, I should, should say. Um, equal to an empty string initially, and it's going to be dash dash, then the boundary, then rn. Slash r slash n means carriage return, and then new line. Carriage return is r, new line is n. Uh, they only work in double quotes. You in singles, you just get this and the raw URL variable, like this net, this literally, this literal text printed out. I should say. Um, this is just the way you do HTTP headers. Basically, um, it separates. Like I said, it separates each post field, or it will anyway. Um, next thing we need to add, the next header, is the in the same way. We're adding the content disposition header. So, content disposition. And I'm going to set that to form data. And we're going to set the name of the sort of simulated form field equal to a string. Obviously, these quotes need escaping. And then we are going to set that to the name variable. And following that, we need two. Our ends, just because that's what you do, <laughs> and then following that you have the value. So we, oops, just add on the value, like so, not the veil, the value. So that's what we're going to do to sort of build up the post um, sort of body. Each one has its header, and then we're going to add a header section above this, and then send the whole thing to the server. So what we need to do after this is add the final boundary, which is the same as the one you add above each content disposition header, um, but it has two dashes following it, um, and yeah, that's the only difference. So what we do here is just do post dot equals oops dash dash boundary like so, followed by dash dash. Rn again. So that's it for the post part, so the bit that follows the main headers. 
Okay, so what we want to do next is define like the top part, the main headers that starts with post, basically. Um, and the way we're going to do this is going to be different depending on if the user has specified a query string or not. So say if the URL was just this, we would want to send post data directly to this IP address, not to like this full path on this IP address, if that makes sense. So we need to do an if statement check here. So I'm going to say if Okay, the, I should just also point out the things I demonstrated that the parse URL function returns. Um, are, say if, well, yeah, okay, if this didn't wasn't there, parse URL of this would return two sort of elements. The first element would be the scheme, which would be HTTP, as before. The second element would be the, oh, what's it called? Server? Host, host. The host would be set to this, and the query wouldn't be set at all. If I had this here, query will be query will be set to this. So what we want to do is check if query is set. If it is, we want to use it. If it's not, we're just going to use the um, the um, thingy. Oh, hang on, no, that's wrong. I'm sorry, ignore me completely. Okay, you have um, the pass URL function returns. Uh, let's let's do some examples. This is almost definitely be the best way to explain this. Why am I trying to do it in words? Let's just delete that. Let's go to our test page. Let's comment out this function call. And then let's just do some raw print underscore r pass URL of this URL. So if I go to our page now and load this up, you see we get this, same thing. Uh, it tells you the scheme, ignore that. It tells you the host and it tells you the path. However, if we remove this part, and hit reload, you see we get the path as a slash, which means just the current URL. If we put that back, oops, like so, and add in a query string, like get information, test equals this, voice, there we go, and hit that, you see we get this new um, query thingy, and that's what we need to look for, because you may want to send get data as well as the post data. Uh, so yeah, that's what we're doing here, instead of the thing I just explained, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, so host is always set, um, path is always set, query is not always set. So what we're going to actually check for is if is set URL query. And if that query is set, we're going to send some get data. If it's not, we're just going to send like the default no get data basically. Um, and what we're going to do inside these two blocks is define the start of the main header. So we're going to set the head variable equal to um, post, because we're working in post. Um, and if the query string is defined, we want to, well, we always want to do this bit, which is uh, URL path followed by question mark to because the question mark is removed from the query string the query sort of thing that partial l returns so after the question mark we want to add the query string url query and that will send get data as well that's, that's just how you send get data as part of the url so you can just do that um, and then just the rest of the http header which is this to signify the end of the line. Um, I'm just going to copy this down uh, to the to a block below and then if the query string is not set we don't want to use it, we just want to send things straight to the um, to the path. So uh, after that we want to build up the rest of the header uh, because obviously just sending that one line wouldn't work as expected. We need to send the boundary content type, the host, and the content length. Oh, and connection close, just because that's what you need to do. Um, so what we're going to do is four more, we're going to add four more headers to this head variable. So we're going to do head dot equals quotes uh, host, which is the sort of server that you're sending post data to, um, which was URL host, oops, j host, just host. Um, 
and then well that, that came from the URL again so rn to signify the end of that header then I'm going to add a new header second time that's going to be equal to um, content type multi part slash form data and then we're going to set the boundary bound arg equal to something leave that at the end uh, and that something is going to be the boundary boundary variable that we found defined at the top and then again we need rn to signify the end of this header so the next one is the length of the data we're sending and that is content length and it's going to be equal to um, the length of the post information so everything other than the headers basically so we're going to add on the string length because that will be equal to the binary length at least ish most of the time of the post variable that is unless you're sending binary data there shouldn't be any problems here and then we just need to add the old rn without the a to the end of that as well then the final header uh, you need to add oops, head dot equals connection close rn rn the double rn always comes at the end of all of the headers like before we used it like well before we were only sending one header in each part and then we used it there because that was the end of the headers even though there were only one so it was a little bit confusing here we are sending rn 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 to signify the end of each of these headers these three four five four and then this fifth one has a um, double rn to signify the end of all headers so now we have this sort of head header uh, response HTTP um, request sorry uh, sort of set up we can just output it to see if it's if it looks like we expect so let's just do echo um, this is what we're going to be sending to the uh, server by the way so we're going to echo um, head followed by post so I go back to our page now and hit reload I probably aren't call I'm not calling the function nope so if I oh actually we need to give that a valid key oh it is valid <laughs> uh, let's reload that oh and let's view the page source to get a uh, okay well we can still see it right so this bit here is the HTTP header um, not sure why that zero is there why is that zero there? If I, okay, hang on. <laughs> that zero probably shouldn't be there. It's before the final boundary. Oh, it's the <laughs> okay. It's the value. Um, yeah, the val. Sorry, right, I missed something here. The value needs uh, a new line after it as well. Sorry, an R N after it as well. So let's reload this. See, that wouldn't have worked. I would have spent ages trying to work out why. Um, so. These, this looks pretty much right to me. We've defined this random boundary. We've used it successfully both times. The, set, the final time we use the boundary, it has two dashes following it as well. Um, the name has been entered correctly. The value has. Oops. Value has. I'll highlight the value. There we go. Uh, that's spelt right. So is that. Host is right. Host looks good. Okay, so that is, well actually, when you click on a form submit button, your browser sends a similar request to this to whatever server is in the action thing. It does a similar sort of workout <laughs> process. Uh, so yeah, that's the basics of HTTP headers. So now we have that, we need to work out how to send it, which I will do in part, whatever part follows this video. Okay, so thanks for watching, and hopefully I've explained this as best I can. I've tried to keep it as technical pointlessness free as possible. So hopefully you understood, and join me in part, the next part, where we will finish this function off and test out the system.